Tell me what skills you have and what skills you want. Tell me what knowledge you have and what knowledge you want. Tell me what help you need, what help you want. Learn to ask for it and then show me that you have a desire. I think we don't know what we want to do unless we see it. And I speak a lot uh, around the world, uh, not just in corporations, but for every paid engagement that I do, I do a free engagement, at least one at a school. And one of the exercises I, I do, especially with younger kids, is I have them draw what they want to be. And the reason I do that is I think there's really three things that determine your success is one, the skills that you have. And we have to reiterate the skills that you learn on the field can transfer off the field and then the knowledge that you gain, right? The knowledge that we have. And then finally, there is a burning desire that we learn on the field to be and what we can be, right? The people that must be what they can be are the most successful people. And that's what I try to instill in all the kids. And I ask them, go ahead, just take a minute, write down, draw a picture of what you want to be. Show me what you can be. And I was in a room one time and everybody got excited and they're drawing all kinds of really cool things. And I could see a little boy in the back holding the pen, not knowing what to draw. And then his face lit up, his eyes went up and he started drawing. So I kind of walked over to see what he was drawing and he, draw, he drew a picture of a pizza delivery man. And it was puzzling to me, right? He seemed like a really good kid. I was in an at-risk school, but this kid seemed to be engaged. It wasn't if he wasn't trying. And so after the class, I asked the teacher, I said, you know, explain this to me. Right? I give him an option to draw whatever he can be. And she said, oh, well, that's the only male role model that he has, right? Everyone else in his family is either dead or in jail. And that's the one person he looks up to. And it struck me that no matter what socioeconomic level you're at, if you can't see it, then you can't be it. And so I looked at teaching kids on the field three things, skills, knowledge, and an unstoppable desire. I taught the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Not the guy playing next to you, right? I never, you know, could be as good as my friends over there. You know, I wasn't born with a certain potential, but I had an un stoppable desire to be all that I could be on the field and off the field. You know, I went to Notre Dame in, all the way up into graduate school. It was funny. As I looked, they have the same problem. I said, you know, who here wants to work in sports? Is the MBA sports management program at, at, at uh, Notre Dame. All of them raised their hand. I said, who here thinks it's difficult to get a job in sports? All of them raised their hand. I said, who here has a job in sports? These were second year MBA students. Three of them raised their hand. I said to the first kid, I said, where do you have a job? He said, I'm working for Scott's Lawn Care. Everybody laughed in the room. I said, well, tell me about that job. He said, yeah, they were looking for a VP of marketing with my graduate degree. I, I looked into it, and they have a multi-million dollar budget buying advertising and marketing and hospitality to host the dealers around the country. I get to go to all the greatest sporting events from the Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, Masters, Kentucky Derby, SB's, Emmys, Oscars. Everybody at ESPN is going to love me because I actually hold the dollars that pays ESPN. So who are they going to really take care of when I go to all these sporting events? And I said, damn, that sounds like my job. <laughs> people pay me to hang out with rich people at the nicest sporting events in the world. In fact, when I spun off from Lee Steinberg, the sports agency, what most people thought was their dream job, Warren Moon and I, the Hall of Fame quarterback, founded that company. I said, this is simple, man. People don't get the business. Let's go ahead and pay the athletes to come with us to the things that we like to do. And all the rich people, they'll come with us because they want to be with you guys. And then let's just ask them to help other people. Let's make money to help people and have fun and go to all these things. That's how I built my business. And I use the skills that I learned in school. I have a law degree, I've never practiced law in my life. I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. I also ran the, uh, Samsung's first phone division. But I learned how to negotiate there. I hired a bunch of different athletes to do endorsements, speaking engagements, appearances. I knew the other side of being an agent, which prepared me for this. So as I look at CIS and these careers in sports, number one, sports is an industry. It's not a job. We need to tell these kids, sports is an industry, not a job. It is the least competitive place to get a job. Now, 
If you want to play for the Bulls like that kid, it's competitive. You want to be a front office guy, it's competitive. You want to work you know, for a team as a general manager, it's competitive. But just as competitive as being the best at every other profession is, it's a multi-billion dollar industry that crosses every dimension. I know kids that work in the East, I own an eSport team, right? One of the best investments I've ever made. Incredible jobs for programmers, designers, graphic artists, poets. I mean, I can go through so many different careers if we just could get kids to focus in on enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential. The skills that you want to have, the knowledge you want to gain, be more interested than interesting. Lastly, I have a couple minutes, I tell a story that's indicative of my career. So when I was lying on the field and thinking doctor, lawyer, or failure, my older brother was doing his residency over at UCLA. I said, I'm gonna go figure out because I better be a doctor because the only thing I wanted to be was rich. I grew up with a single mom, six kids, five boys and a girl. My mom would pack our lunch in a paper bag, put us into a Country Squire station wagon. After she taught the second grade, we'd go fill up turnstiles at the 7-Eleven with greeting cards. And I told myself, man, I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna buy my mom a house and a car. I'm gonna be a professional football player. Well, that didn't work out, so I'll be a doctor. I go right to my brother, he's doing his residency. First thing I say to him, I'm 18 years old at a great college, much better academic school than was football school. And I said to my brother, I'm like, man, I hate hospitals. He looked at me and he goes, what are you talking about? You're pre-med, Dave, you hate hospitals? I go, yeah, I wanna be a sports doctor. I'm gonna be on the sidelines in the training rooms. I don't have to be in a hospital. And he looked at me like at 18 years old, as he has dedicated his whole life to medicine. And he said to me that piece of advice, David, you got to be more interested than interesting. And I can't tell you in my career how many kids come up to me and say, Mr. Meltzer, I want to have your job. I want to be Jerry Maguire. I want to have and be a sports agent. And I just resonates in my head, man, be more interested than interesting. If you knew what that job was like, what you're asking me right now is like telling me you want to be a doctor but not sit in a hospital. Tell me what skills you have and what skills you want. Tell me what knowledge you have and what knowledge you want. Tell me what help you need, what help you want. Learn to ask for it. And then show me that you have a desire. Right? Everyone, I have one of the biggest internship programs, not only here in California, but in the entire world. And I had a young kid came in and he said, Mr. Meltzer, I want to work for you. So you got 90 days to prove me that you want to work for me, that you have the skills, you have the knowledge, but I don't see you have the desire. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you need to come in here like Rudy. And he looks at me, I go, yeah, like Rudy wanted to play football at Notre Dame. You gotta come in here and show me you wanna work for me like Rudy wanted to play football at Notre Dame. That's what I'm talking about. It's a desire to be what you can be. And he looked at me and he said, who's Rudy? I said, get the F out of my office. Make me feel that old. But guess who showed up 5.30 a.m. waiting for me to open the doors of my office the next day? Right? Because I showed him. He went and watched the movie. It's the, it's the background on his phone. Right? This is what we knew. Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant told me, he said, I said, what's your favorite movie? He said, Rudy. I said, come on, man. I go, Rudy's my favorite movie. Look at me. Right? <laughs> How can Rudy be Kobe Bryant's favorite movie? And he said, because every time, Dave, he said, when I was playing basketball in Europe, every time my dad saw me not being what I could be, not trying my hardest, he'd hand me that DVD and say, watch this. You wanna feel blessed? You got to live to your potential. Rudy was living to his potential. That potential, and that's what we need to instill in these kids. There's millions of jobs in sports. And the, there's ones that we don't even know about, right? And ones that, it's traditional business people and sports people. We don't and cannot even imagine what sports are gonna be like in the next 10 years. I make millions of dollars off of people watching people play games and they call it a sport. So, you know, I have no clue what's gonna happen next year. But if we're not teaching the skills, we're not giving them the knowledge, and most importantly, we're not teaching them to have a desire to be what they can be, it doesn't matter what industry they want to work in. They're gonna be stuck saying, I coulda, shoulda been, I woulda been, and they're not gonna be productive, accessible, and gracious in their life.